It's been a while, hasn't it? Since I talked about this show in particular, at least. I've been going through a lot of inner turmoil, and I've been trying to figure a lot of things out. And I thought that maybe one of the best ways to deal with it is try to go back to the beginning. Maybe see if there's something that I've lost along the way. And check out this episode in particular. We're doing an episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog today, and what's the most underrated episode? Well, the answer to that question are probably Robot Randy or Muted Muriel. A better question to ask is, what's the most misunderstood episode of this show? That would be the very last episode of the original run. Perfect. If you've never seen this episode before, you probably only know it for one thing. That creepy blue trumpet. If you have seen this episode, you probably think that it's just a weird little plot with an uplifting message and a creepy blue trumpet thing. But this episode is a lot more. This is probably an overused sentiment, but this episode is like really deep, man. To the point where it's in my top five of the show. That's probably because, like Last of the Star Makers, it touches me in a personal way. This episode starts with Eustace sitting on his ass while Courage is trying to lift the truck with a jack. And of course, probably because Courage has little interest, he screws it up. You painted the chicken too wrong. And you did a lousy job repairing the windmill. Hey, did you guys ever have that person in your life who asked you to do something you had absolutely no experience in, gave you absolutely no explanation on how to do it, and reprimanded you when you screwed up? Like 20 times a day? Every single day? Let me tell you, something like that really eats away at your psyche, and it builds insecurities like no tomorrow. You can't do nothing right, you amateur. You ought to go the right thing to in school. Someone who'll make you perfect. And it does that to Courage. Every time he makes mistakes, even in a more friendly environment away from Eustace, he becomes more and more devastated with each passing failure. Even if Muriel is just shrugging off his flaws, it doesn't wipe away the shame that he has at screwing up. And then Courage meets the teacher. Now, this is one of the most interesting monsters that the show has ever had. You know that most cartoons have, like, a theory, right? Like SpongeBob SquarePants is after a nuclear detonation. Have you heard of this show's theory? The theory is that this show is from the perspective of, like, a real-life dog. Dog, and the monsters are just strange and new things that a dog wouldn't understand. Like the mailman gets interpreted as a monster who keeps trying to kidnap his owners. While I don't think that theory has that much merit, I do think it's a pretty good explanation for this episode in particular. You see, the teacher isn't real. She's a manifestation and a metaphor for the real monster in this episode, Courage's insecurities. I'm not kidding. They show that Muriel cannot see her. Why, do you think that the teacher just had random disappearing powers? If this episode does have a flaw, that that could have been shown a little bit stronger. It was years before I actually got that only Courage could see the teacher. And when that happened, everything else about this episode clicked, and it became like magic. I want to see perfect posture. Shoulders back. Chin out. Ears up. So yes, everything the teacher says is coming right from within Courage's own thoughts and insecurities. You're not the least bit perfect. It makes scenes like this all the stronger, and it creates a perfect explanation to why Courage is listening to her. He himself created her on some level. He wants to be perfect. I also like how Eustace triggered this. Well, I don't like how Eustace triggered this. You know what I mean. On no level would Courage ever want to be perfect for Eustace. But because he's the one who triggered it, it showed how deep the insecurities can go, and how insecurity over being perfect or even good enough can come from someone you don't like or even despise. It shoots the, why don't you just stop listening to these people excuse right in its foot. Sometimes you just can't because it manifests itself in a very general, very personal way. Can you speak correctly? Not since season one. Anyway, the lessons go on and Courage can't possibly hope to reach the level of perfect. Also, she keeps insulting Courage and not providing any solid advice. This is what insecurities do. They trick you into thinking that they have the best interest of what you create or do, when in reality, they're just thinly veiled ways that your own fears insult you. And they have creative ways of doing it too. The most common way is having you compare your own work to the work of others, the work of people who, to quote my own insecurities, are much better than you could ever hope to be because they're much more talented. When in reality said people could have better education, a lot more practice, or a lot more passion. Comparing yourself to others is a trap that I still fall into time and time again. Unfortunately, because this is not an easy monster to beat. Now, Courage is told that he needs to go to sleep, 
and to do it perfectly. It sounds easy, but sleeping perfectly is like the most impossible thing to do ever. It's easier to launch a rocket ship perfectly than to go to sleep perfectly. And this is the part that everyone remembers the episode for. The bizarre dreams. Alright, first of all, to be totally honest, the CGI bugle is basically on the same level as King Ramses to me. It was scary at one point, but the technology is so dated now it has lost all effect. More to the point, this shows what building insecurities do to you. One symptom is that they can give you nightmares, and that's provided they let you sleep at all because insomnia is another symptom. Hell, deep enough insecurities can really cause you to hallucinate, or misinterpret things as attacks on you even if they're random chance, they can give you body image issues, or even make you anhedonic. This part of the episode might have been annoying because there's a total of five different dreams, but they're all really quick and they're quite varied, so I think it works. And besides, they give people enough time to recover over the demon trumpet thing. And I do like the other art styles used here. Bottom line, Courage doesn't get any sleep because of the nightmares caused by the insecurities, and being sleep deprived tends to make the insecurities worse, because now you have even less of a chance of meeting the standards of your insecurities. Sometime later, Courage is forced to take a final exam, and if he doesn't pass, there will be consequences. Everywhere you go for the rest of your life, everyone will know that you're imperfect. Courage gets out of doing it immediately by going to the bathroom, where he's told to brush his teeth perfectly. While there, the fish from Muriel's dinner recipe talks to him. No such thing as perfect. You're beautiful as you are. With all your imperfections, you can do anything. <gasps> Morals from this show can come from some of the weirdest things. But really, this is the simplest way of beating insecurities. Stop trying to be perfect. That doesn't mean stop trying to be good or doing the best that you can. When we stop worrying that we might fail, only then can we succeed. And once the insecurities are gone, the tone of the episode is much lighter and Courage is much happier. For the final exam, Courage is told to draw a perfect number six. Instead of trying to be perfect, he tries to be himself and does it in a unique way. This causes the anxiety to literally melt away. It really is a good episode with a good message. And this show is full of them. But I wanted to talk about this one specifically because, well, besides other only talking about the demon trumpet, people tend to consider it just a weird episode from the show, but I think it's more than that. It, it's got some depth, man. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since I talked about this show in particular, at least. I've been going through a lot of inner turmoil, and I've been trying to figure a lot of things out, and I thought that maybe one of the best ways to deal with it is try to go back to the beginning. Maybe see if there's something that I've lost along the way. And check out this episode in particular. We're doing an episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog today, and what's the most underrated episode? Well, the answer to that question are probably Robot Randy or Muted Muriel. A better question to ask is, What's the most misunderstood episode of this show? That would be the very last episode of the original run. Perfect. If you've never seen this episode before, you probably only know it for one thing. That creepy blue trumpet. If you have seen this episode, you probably think that it's just a weird little plot with an uplifting message and a creepy blue trumpet thing. But this episode is a lot more. This is probably an overused sentiment, but this episode is like, really deep, man. To the point where it's in my top five of the show. That's probably because, like Last of the Star Makers, it touches me in a personal way. This episode starts with Eustace sitting on his ass while Courage is trying to lift the truck with a jack. And of course, probably because Courage has little interest, he screws it up. You painted the chicken tube wrong. And you did a lousy job repairing the windmill. Hey, did you guys ever have that person in your life who asked you to do something you had absolutely no experience in, gave you absolutely no explanation on how to do it, and reprimanded you when you screwed up? Like 20 times a day? Every single day? Let me tell ya, something like that really eats away at your psyche, and it builds insecurities like no tomorrow. You can't do nothing right, you amateur. You ought to go the right thing to in school. Someone who'll make you perfect. 
And it does that to Courage. Every time he makes mistakes, even in a more friendly environment away from Eustace, he becomes more and more devastated with each passing failure. Even if Muriel is just shrugging off his flaws, it doesn't wipe away the shame that he has at screwing up. And then Courage meets the teacher. Now, this is one of the most interesting monsters that the show has ever had. You know that most cartoons have, like, a theory, right? Like SpongeBob SquarePants is after a nuclear detonation. Have you heard of this show's theory? The theory is that this show is from the perspective of, like, a real-life dog, and the monster